Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service, jbiztechphilly.com, and also now the columnist for the Jewish press. That's right, and uh, you know, I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't as the case may be. Well, with us, and he was already mentioned in my column in the Jewish press, right. is Sam Fine. He is an assembly staffer, but he just got elected to the Albany County Legislature at the tender age of 25? Yes, correct. Wow. Yeah. A quarter of a, it took you a quarter of a century to get to the <laughs> Albany County Legislature. Yes. Now, now your, your family is from the Albany area, but you came here from Newton or yes, Massachusetts? Yes, Newton, Massachusetts. Which is a suburb of suburb Boston. Suburb just west of Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why, you know, so you essentially chose Albany to yeah. be your place to live. And then you ran for office, you're here like less than a year or? Uh, no, a over, over, two, uh, over two and a half Well, years. where did you so go to college? Uh, I went to Union College right, in Schenectady. so that's local. So that's how I got acquainted yeah, but it's with not, the region. Well, it's another county, so when yeah. you talk about county <laughs> issues and county government, that's what I'm saying, you know, you really have to uh, be here in this county. So. Mm -hmm. In Albany County, he's only been here two and a half it's years. Capital district, though, you get yeah. used to. So, that. what do you do in the assembly? Uh, I do communications. So, I work for the Democratic Conference. We uh, write press releases, mailers. So, you know, some of the some of the mail you might get from your local assembly member might come uh, be designed in my office. Okay. So, and might have your handiwork as a ghostwriter in there. Yeah, you never know. You never yeah. know. Okay, yeah. so you're very talented. What made you want to run for county? Legislature it was an open seat. It was a new district. It covers the riverfront basically from the south end all the way up to Delaware Avenue where your house is. Yeah, I mean, I, um, I've always uh, been interested in politics and thought about getting involved in politics. And so, you know, I feel that the best way to really make it make a change is through changing policy and especially the local government I think you can make a big difference and you know community I'm living in there's a you know, a lot of inequality there's poverty there's a lot of vacant buildings uh, I think there's not enough for the youth to do and youth are really struggling so I saw a lot of issues and I thought the best way to really make a difference was running myself and really pushing for the you know policies that that I you know, thought were would make you, a Were difference. you a one-man band campaign, or? Uh, I had a uh, good friend of mine ran, ran the campaign. He was my campaign manager. That's it, uh, the two of you. Well, I had a lot of volunteers. Yeah. I had friends volunteered for me. Uh, community members um, who were supportive went out and went door to door for me. So you know, I had a lot of support in the community, and that really helped. Now, what's so yeah. ironic with this is that this district was really drawn as a new minority majority district where the majority of the residents were minorities. Yes. Now, you don't look like you're <laughs> He is a minority. Jewish. He's Jewish, Jewish over Jewish. here. That's He's Jewish. Why. And you'd be the only Jewish legislator in the county legislature. So, you know, that's you really are a minority within a minority. <laughs> I, I guess so. But, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white person. And uh, yes, the district are. was <laughs> created. Uh, it, there was a, a lawsuit that went on for years about the uh, about the district because there weren't uh, when the redistricting was done after the 2010 census there weren't enough minority majority districts right. created and so there's a voting rights act lawsuit and so right before you know shortly before actually election got started they redrew they redrew the lines created one more minority majority district and so that's uh, that's the sixth district that I'm representing now it's ironic that they drew it to have someone of either black or Hispanic, you know, supposedly yeah. win, and then you won and kind of ticked off some yeah. members in the African American community. Well, I think some people view it as ironic, but I view it, I think the people really d did choose because, you know, I think I, my view is the district was created so that minorities would have a choice of who they want to represent them, and that person, they can choose whoever they want regardless of race. So, you know, I feel that. I won because you know people didn't vote based on race. They voted based on who they thought would represent the best and the issues that you know I was talking about. And I really made the effort to go out and meet people, build relationships with people in the community. And I think that's what really matters. People want to know that they have a, a representative who's going to, uh, you know, who they know, who they can trust, and who's going to follow up with them and reach out to them, listen to their concerns. So I think you know I think that's why I really won. And and you won handily. You just yeah. didn't win by like a ten votes or something. You know. Yeah, I think it was uh, sixty. About sixty votes. Uh, it was forty-three, about forty-three percent in a three-way primary. Right. So yeah, it's uh, a pretty, pretty strong win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, when you really only needed 34%, you got 43%. Yeah. Which is great. You so, know, it's yeah. interesting, though, Mark, but really you talk about minorities that really, maybe from the history, the you don't want to say ghost, but just, this really was a Jewish area. And that's what we're going to get to. Your yeah. good segue. There you go. Because his grandparents or great-grandparents were from the south end of Albany. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so my great my great great grandfather and my great great grandparents moved okay. from Lithuania uh, to the to the Albany into the capital region with my great grandfather and his eleven other siblings. Uh, my great grandfather was preteen years, and uh, yeah, they lived. My great grandfather they lived on four ninety nine Delaware Ave. My great grandfather grew up there. Um, he, I'm told my grandmother tells me that my great grandfather, great great grandfather, actually, when he'd move places and there wasn't a synagogue, he'd found a synagogue. So he was involved in the founding of a couple synagogues in Albany, but I'm not sure which ones. I have to, you know, verify the okay verify that. But um, so he grew up. The, and was his last name Fine? His or? last name was Breslau because it's on my grandmother's side. So B R E S L O V. Uh, so it's actually my great great grandfather yeah. spelled it B R E S L A W. L A W. But my great grandfather was the one out of twelve siblings who switched the spelling to L A U. So it's it's both. So um, okay. my great my uh, family, my great grandfather's brother. Uh, a lot of the brothers had different businesses in the Albany area. One was the Breslau Brothers Furniture on South Pearl Street, and that was spelled with a W. Um, and there was a couple. Bre there was one in Schenectady, a Breslau Brothers Furniture in Schenectady, and there's I think some others throughout the capital region. There was also I believe a Mill End Shops, which sold um, which sold like custom drapery uh, on North Pearl Street. And there was we had some of those family had some of those throughout the capital region. And there was a Swire Appliance on mm -hmm. South Pearl Street. So it's it's nice to uh, come back to your come roots. Come back to my roots, where my family had a lot of businesses in the area. Well, in you the know, district. It's, it's interesting because this goes back to what the 1920s that you, yeah, I great believe, grandpa, 100 years ago. Yeah, about I don't know the exact years, but around then. Because I, I you know, I, I don't want to say this, uh, but I think that's when Moshe Losik's father came and yeah, had his Losik furniture. Also, late 30s, but yeah, the yeah. Jews were in the furniture business. Yeah, I'm right. told there were a lot of uh, Jewish-owned businesses yeah. in the in the South End. It's mm -hmm. always a shame. I mean, I come from Chicago, but that same idea of a Jewish neighborhood. Yeah. So in Albany, you don't even feel that way, even though there's a cluster around the Scotland White Hall Road, but you don't feel there's a Jewish bakery and a Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, you don't feel Jewishy. You know. Yeah, so like there's you can't not say. a kosher deli to go to and get a nice sandwich. <laughs> but there's a know. kosher vegetarian restaurant that you can go to to get a nice Indian flavored oh, really? kosher Terra. vegetarian, yes. That's on Washington Avenue called Terra. Oh, okay, so I didn't it's know that. Low, yeah, between Lark and Henry Johnson. So I'm here to tell you. There you go. <laughs> Always promoting. Try to build up the Jewish community. That's right. Yeah. So, you're, uh, so the Jewish community started here in the 1880s, really, to, to form, you know, and then every 20 years there was another influx of, yeah. of Jews. So your parent, your great great grandparents were the Lithuanian yeah. Jews that came. Yeah, okay. they they came from Lithuania. And what part of, do you know the city or? Uh, no, that's no. I, I don't know. Do you that. keep so. up your Jewish. I mean, you're from Newton, and then you went to Union. You yeah. had a bar mitzvah and the Jewish education. Yeah, I mean, it's like, and then Union, Union College. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of Jews at Union also, and you went. But yeah, I've, and you went to the Chabad at Union. Yeah, I'd, I'd go to Chabad for uh, Friday night dinners at Union for Shabbat dinners. Well, it's a keeping up the Jewish. Yeah, uh, yeah, I keep up. You know, I continuity. I'm, yeah, uh, strongly identify with you know my Jewish Jewishness, and I celebrate the holidays. I tend to go to temple, you know, twice twice a year. But, All right, there you uh, go. Um, maybe more. Okay. Maybe more for a bar mitzvah, a bat mitzvah. Uh -huh. but, okay. But I, you know, really, what I enjoy most is celebrating, you know, Passover and Shabbat dinners with family. And that, oh, that's, okay. Excellent. Very good. So yeah. you're more of a cultural Jew, if anything. I, I guess so. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. When you uh, were gravitating towards one type of uh, Jewish uh, tradition or another, were you more towards Reform, Conservative, or Orthodox? Yeah, I, uh, I, if I had to pick one, I'd uh, identify with Reform Judaism. I was mm -hmm. raised uh, Reform Jew, went to Reform Temple. Mm -hmm. 
Now, but you go with Chabad, so at least I Chabad to, is for everybody. That's yeah. true, yeah. absolutely. No, yeah, and yeah, sometimes so people say, you're a Reformed Jew, but you go to Chabad. And it's, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it is, it's open to everyone, and people of all different sects, oh, at least at Union, would go to Chabad, and there was always open discussion about Jewish views and, you know, Jewish laws, and, you know, it was a place where everyone was welcome. Absolutely, Excellent. absolutely, Good. without a doubt. That's, so I wanted, you, I wanted to talk to you now about the county legislature, which yeah. you're about to... Enter in January, so uh, there was a big, you know, change, sea change, relatively speaking, in the county legislature, where 35 percent of the legislature will be new members. No, I wanted to ask you, Mark, why do you think that is? That's a very big turnover. Maybe it's the pay isn't good, or it's just a lot the of retirees. A lot of people. It's like the changing of the old guard. A lot of people just simply got tired of. Uh, the drudgery of having to go to these meetings, uh, you know, not having their opinion respected in some cases. Uh, other times they would. Well, the pay isn't good either. I mean, it's not no, like a the real pay. Job. The pay is the. It's a part-time job, but the pay is not supposed to be a full-time salary. The pay is good, and you get health benefits with it. And there's one guy, Gil Ethier, you know, who's been there for 35 years or 40 years. I mean, so you do have the institutional memory there. But there are just a lot of people who just want to serve and not make it a lifetime commitment. So they move on. Well, that's good also. That's good also, because you, know, like you get new blood like Sam. There, there you go. That's right. Yeah. You're the youngest member of the legislature. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I guess Chris Higgins used to be and, yeah. and stole that mantle away from him. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I'm sure he knew eventually. Uh, <laughs> someone, someone would have yeah. to. He'd get old enough where yeah. someone would have to come in. Uh, so there... There are seven members of the 14. Half of the members are replacing retiring members of the same party. So of, the, of all of those who retired, you know, they, there's no change in the uh, party affiliation. Uh, there were two seats that flipped when the incumbent retired, it's meaning that a Republican like Peter Klaus, he, when he retired, uh, uh, Richard Touchette, the Democrat took that seat in Queemans. Right. And, uh, you know, Peter held on to that seat for probably a good 35 years. Yeah. Um, and then Paul Bergdorf, uh, when Rich Jacobson retired and didn't run again, which he was on the show, Rich. No, of and, and most of these people. Yeah, and Paul Bergdorf, he's a Republican, so he took a Democratic seat. But it just doesn't change the... Uh, there are still 10 Republicans and 29 yeah. Democrats. So, um, and hmm. then you had three legislators who ousted incumbents of the same party, which I feel is really incredible. Uh, you know, and it was all the New Scotland, uh, town of New Scotland, town of Bethlehem, Guildland, that whole section. But you didn't take over. You didn't. Uh, what's your personal? Who was there before you? Well, it was a new seat that they drew. But oh, I, really? I look at it when I have to scramble and and align yeah. whoever. It was the sixth district was uh, Noel Kinch. Noel. Yeah, Kinch, you're right. Yeah. It's kind of complicated because uh, it wasn't it, really that, the sixth yeah. district used to be re represented by Noel Kinch, but it is a much different district. Yeah. The lines are, you know, almost all completely different. Yeah. So, you know. You probably yeah. have two blocks that are similar to our yeah. district within, yeah. that overlapped our district. Yeah, my district <laughs> actually overlaps with a, a multiple, you right. know, a few of the former. Yes, um, they took a little bit from yeah. here and there. But there were two legislators who ousted incumbents of the opposite party, and one Democrat and one Republican. So the alignment's still the so same. So the alignment's still the same, but it's just interesting to see how many people... Uh, yeah, how many Switch over of the, the same party, party yeah. and you know, ten of them, you know, were just of the same party, and they're just new people, new Democrats. Let's say. Sam, what were you, what are the issues that you ran on that you see that needs correcting, or everything's nothing's perfect in the world? So, what were like the main issues that you were? Uh, yeah, the main elected on the main issue that I you know would speak to people about, and it's probably the main issue that people spoke to me about and said was their biggest concern was uh, a lack of programs for the youth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you think that's for minorities? Do you think because they're minorities? I mean, I'm just saying to a person middle class saying, hey, I'll go to a club or I'll go to like a Jewish yeah. kid, I'll go to the JCC. I have enough what to do, but maybe from a low. 
yeah, low-income minority I, people, hey, I want the government to step in and help. Well, yeah, I think a lot of it is, you know, in uh, lower-income neighborhoods, a lot of these neighborhoods have been ignored for a while. Um, people aren't getting the services they need. And, yeah, for instance, a middle-class family might be able to afford to send their kids to a, you know, costly summer camp or drive their kids every day to a soccer program but you know low uh, lower income people often or you know don't have the time for that don't have the can't afford you know the transportation um, you know wor working many hours just you know to feed their mm -hmm. family so it's you know it's a uh, it's a very you know tough situation so I think that's where the, the government needs to step in and really provide these programs to people make and also another another aspect of this is I think it, a lot of there are some existing programs that there's not proper outreach, so people don't know what's available to them. Well, um, Trinity Institution yeah, Tr is a big... Trinity Institution. Which is run by a Jewish guy, Harris Oberlander. Oh, okay, I didn't and, know that. And yeah. uh, he's someone who's... I wouldn't uh, think Trinity doesn't sound like a, a right. Jewish uh, organization, <laughs> Thank you. So but I'm that's who runs that. it, and he does a very good job there. Yeah. And I just wanted to... Uh, you know, but there are other... Uh, a couple of new places that just cropped up near Lincoln Park. There's a ca the Capital South Campus Center. Right. Um, which is providing some uh, college classes, uh, to, you know, to people in the neighborhood, and I think that's a good thing. But again, you know, I think outreach is, is a big issue. You really have to get the word out to people that these are there's programs out there that um, that they can they, they can use, and I think you know we really have to do a better job at that. But it's it's not just the outreach. And Pastor, there aren't enough Pastor programs. Charlie opened up something across from Capitol Park. From the Capitol South Campus Center. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, yeah there's a. Pastor Charlie opened something up there where he has uh, opportunities for kids after school, also. Yeah, yeah. Although I'm not sure how much that's uh, being being utilized if it's fully yeah. operational. But that's something to promote. These are ch church uh, organized or it's yeah. government? Church. No, church, yeah. Church. Well, the Capitol South Campus Center, I think, is a partnership with government right. and, and uh, nonprofits, right. the Trinity Alliance. That's right. Um, but I'm talking yeah. about, I was asking yeah. about right. Pastor, yeah. Uh, but there's another big issue, oil trains, that I'm oil, sure you've oil heard yeah. a lot about. And what's your thoughts on the oil trains? Get rid of them, or? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'd, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to get rid of them, but it's, in, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. Uh, the county, uh, you know, the, the f railroads are up, it's a federal government issue. And well, why do you want to get rid of them? Well, the oil trains... Is and do you personally, or are you just echoing your, your constituents? Well, it's both. I mean, I've actually uh, was involved, before I ran for office, in an organization called PAWS, which is People of Albany United for Safe Energy that is pushing back against the oil trains. So it's actually an issue I've cared about okay. before, before I ran for office, but definitely my constituents care a lot. And I think there's right. two main issues with the oil trains. One is uh, an oil train could derail, as there have been many derailments throughout the uh, North America. There some. was one in, well, some, one, one but, is but one many. is too much. That's well, there right. was one in Lac Megantic, Quebec, right. and 47 people That's died. That's the one everyone points to, yes. Yeah, so, it, and the amount is going up because uh, since the uh, fracking boom in North Dakota and uh, the rest of the country, the amount of oil coming by rail has shot up, so there's more derailment. So that's a risk, is what if one, a train derailed in Albany? It would be disastrous, you know, hundreds of people would probably die. Um, oh, please, so, <laughs> okay. But that's not the only issue. Uh, I think probably the biggest issue of concern for people in my district is just the health hazards. Um, the fumes and that go into the air, there's higher rates of asthma. Um, a lot of from the these trains? Well, from I think it's trains? it's not only the trains, it's the trains and the industrial sites and the diesel trucks, you know, the highways there. So I think it's, you know, that, that the south end, that, that neighborhood has really been for a long time a dumping ground. Uh, you know, industrial sites have always been put there and uh, without regard to the people living there. You know, a lot of the public housing buildings are, were built right near these sites. Federal, federal housing. Fed, yeah. And the federal tracks. So there was some... Brainiac in the federal well, government who said, hey, let's build housing and let's build trains and let's put them near each other. I mean, well, I'm not <laughs> sure exactly who made this. I think the state and the city was involved. I mean, there's the Albany Housing Authority. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not exactly sure who exactly made the decision to put public housing there or the trains. It was but, a federal Brainiac. You know, it, it, was, it was done and now there's uh, negative consequences. So, so let, me, let, let me tell you my solution. Yeah, okay. And I've said this many times on the show. You, can, you know how you have noise barriers on the thruway? 
Yeah, and they look nice. Yeah, they're not like the when they first built them. They they they've gotten refined and okay. they're looking better. Yeah. Well, you could put up barriers, uh, you know, around the tracks so that if it does derail, it's not going to go very far. The train, and if it does catch on fire, it's going to be contained where you can get in and you can into behind the wall and you can put out the fire. So you're saving lives if you just simply have the federal government, because it's federal land and all that, and the federal government is building a tunnel underneath the Hudson River. You know, they're building the, you know, money for the Second Avenue subway. Yeah. You know, they got money to throw around all over the place. Well, upstate and other areas should have uh, some of that money too for safety and build a, a fireproof or fire resistant wall. Well, yeah, the trouble and is... then it would look yeah. nice, it would be, you know, and you wouldn't see the, uh, the trains, and they would be hidden, and, you know, you, you know everyone would live... You want to run for public <laughs> office over here. And everyone would be happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think the, the trouble idea. is that it's... It not is, a bad idea. There is money to have. I mean, there is... Mo the federal government does have money, and they do give out money, but it's, you know, it's hard to get them to give us the money to, to create that safety future, and you have to make sure the wall is fireproof and... Fire-resistant you know, fi or fireproof? There's no such thing as fireproof. Fire-resistant. I think, I think uh, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting idea. You know, I'd like to see the oil train stop. You know, I understand that that's probably not not totally realistic. I mean, maybe over time, if we move towards clean energy, we won't use oil, but that's not a, something that's going to happen What about tomorrow. the XL pipeline? Would that... The Keystone XL? Yeah, the Keystone, yeah. That's, that's what been... Well, yeah, that's that's not happening anymore, but... The president put the kibosh on I mean, that. He'll yeah. be a new president in a year, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that's a good solution either. Really? Because it, Why not? Uh, because it can contaminate the groundwater. Um, really? I'm not a scientist. Yeah. So that just and I guess suppose and, you're against fracking and, too. And yeah, and also one of the issues with the Keystone XL pipeline was the oil it's bringing down is tar sands oil from Canada, which is one of the dirtiest types of oil. So mm -hmm. it's just making the you know, global warming issue even worse. But we got away from coal. But actually, one of the reasons why the company doesn't even want to build it anymore because it's too costly now. With the price of oil so low, it doesn't make economic sense for them to to uh, you know use this uh, tar sands. And oil you know and ship why down, the price so. of oil is so low because of North Dakota and the fracking. Yeah, so, and that's why. So that's one small benefit, I guess. Isn't the, that the negative great? is that we have all the oil trains. Isn't coming that through great? The port of Alden, <laughs> and they haven't caught on fire yet, and they haven't derailed yet. They have derailed, in Amer locally. Locally, no. Locally. That's right. Once too There's many, Mark. Well, well, you know what? <laughs> you know, th then we wouldn't be driving cars because you know what? When the cars were first built. They were combustible engines, and they were blowing up all over the place, and people were saying, we're going to die in cars. Too. People and, do. I mean. And you know what? They, a lot of people die in cars, but we're not getting rid of our automobiles. And these mm -hmm. things happen, and that's life. And you just have to, for progress, we've got to stop saying no to progress. Well, I, what, view, you know, I view progress... Uh, more as moving towards clean energy rather than continuing I agree and too, upping the amount just of oil like you, we're using. But, but you know what? We've been talking about clean energy from before you were born in this yeah. country. So we've been talking about well, they clean are energy. Forward. We're, we're moving. Getting, and yeah, now when they and that now when they build solar solar farms yeah. to, right. to, for solar energy, now people are saying, "Oh, that's not good." because it's not allowing the sun's rays to get into the ground, and it's destroying the, the nutrients under the ground, and these solar panels are unsightly, and they talk about you know other reasons why you can't do this. Wind farms and are not uh, unsightly for some people, not for others. Others, it's a work of art. I mean, you're going to have these discussions yeah. all the time. It, there's, I mean, no solution's perfect. I haven't heard That's that right. about the so, uh, solar panels. Um, Oh, it's so I'm not getting into the ground. <laughs> but I would think if it's on a roof, you know, the sun's not going to, if it's a roof solar panel, but the sun's just going to go into the panel rather than the roof. But. but there's these, like, I was in Suffolk County in Hop Hog, and they have these huge numbers of, like, the whole county government facilities run on solar. Yeah. And, and you, really? yeah, and you have these huge solar fields. And, the, you know, so there's different types of, you know, other than your house, which, you know, takes a long time yeah. to. Uh, to recoup the investment, so. But yeah, you know, I think 
with with these oil trains, you know, I'd like to see them go, but in the meantime, okay, you know, in the meantime, I think we need right to come up with a solution so that um, people living near them aren't suffering from all these safety safety issues, uh, health health hazards. Um, you know, there's uh, they're trying to make the trains safer. You know, I think that's great, mm. but at the same time, I think it's never going to be totally safe. So, so is there an environmental committee on the county legislature that you want to be on? Or well, what's the equivalent of it? The, uh, the committees that um, I'm thinking that, you know, I haven't requested my committees yet. But the committees I'm thinking of, yeah. probably social services committee, uh, possibly the health committee. But is there an energy or an environmental committee in the county legislature? Um, I'm going to wait to be with the assembly sure. over here. He's going to have to be assemblyman. Mark, well, a few more minutes. Can I catch a few more issues? Yeah, let me. Albany High School vote. Um, Sam, you had said that you were in favor of a hundred of the city spending 196 yeah. million dollars yes. on a new high school when there's a 54 percent dropout uh, graduation rate at the at Albany High. Now, if you were a bad student and you did something wrong and you only got a 54 on your test. Would you go home and be praised and be, say, you know what, go out and play, or here's a new toy, or here's something else that's new? You know, I, no, you would be saying, get your grades up. That's what you need to do. We don't need the fancy schmancy. Well, well, I would say, Sam, why do you think that would? So why were you in favor of this? <laughs> I mean, I've been in the high school, not that I live in Albany, my, not that my kids go to Albany High, but I have been yeah. there. and looked fairly decent to me. I mean, say the, the roof leaks, but the knock down a whole high school well, and make a new one. They needed a, you know, they needed a lot of repairs, uh, the high school. It wasn't in very good condition. There's a lot of evidence that when there is a, a better school, students perform perform better. And you know, I don't really think it's, I think we, rather than trying to you know, blame the students saying 50, I think the 54% dropout rate is really. Graduation rate, gra I think? Graduation yeah. rate is even more reason why we need to build a new high school because we need to make sure we need to we need to fix this problem you know students aren't succeeding so we need to you know it's not going to solve everything but you know the school a, a better school i think will help i hope um, to know you in 25 years where i can ask you about this also, again also but also yeah. this so the the city uh, the school district was saying that whether or not uh, if we don't fix this if we don't rebuild the high school for 196 million <laughs> We're going to have to spend a hundred million just to renovate it because there's so many issues with it, and to expand it be, to uh, accommodate the higher amount of students. Also, the state was actually paying for 63 percent of it. We we're getting 63 percent state Listen, aid. Doesn't matter. So I think you know we really it would make sense. It made sense to take advantage of that state aid. Let me tell I mean, you, really the students, the, the old Albany yeah. High School, yeah, on I think Madison or Western Avenue, yeah. Is still standing. Is still being could still be used. I think it's going to be taken over by all New Albany, and I think that's still there. And that was built over a hundred years ago. So, I, and I don't think, and that doesn't have a pool. And I don't know why Albany, the new Albany High or the current Albany High needs a pool. I didn't have a pool in my high school. Okay. Did you have a pool in your high school? I didn't. I okay. Did. So what? You know, <laughs> what is this whole thing where they need a swimming pool? I don't get. Well, there's it. a swim team, right? So. Well, you know, there's you can have arguments about does it need a pool? Does it need the, you know does it need this feature? Um, you know the plan that they can they go put, over to the Albany JCC and use the pool there. Yeah, they, you, I mean, but it I mean, seemed can, like it was too opulent. I didn't, you know, the plan might not have been perfect. There could have been some things in there that weren't necessary. But I think overall, I think it was necessary. They they needed to totally rebuild the high school. It's uh, over 40 years old. You know, I think it was time. Um, I think the students deserve a good school, and so I think it made sense. And the fact that the state was going to pay for 63%, we, we didn't want to you know, miss out on that state aid. You know, it was a very close vote, unfortunately. Ten, well, uh, it was failed. 10 it votes was 10 after votes election, election day, night. but I think 40 votes when the absentees uh, yeah, were counted. I, th I thought it was uh, 90 or 90 something. 90 votes? Okay, so wrong, it failed yeah. by less than 100 votes. Yeah, I mean, so it's very close, and there, it was over shows, 11,000 votes. It shows you every vote counts. It really, it really does. does. Yeah. No, it's important. And people it don't believe important. that. More people need to get out. Vote. All right. Definitely. Well, yeah, that's it over here, Mark. You're uh, done with your questions. It's just about. We're going to Sam. We're going to okay. have to have you back after a little experience okay, in the Albany sure. Legislature because then we'll you'll have some real issues. You'll tell you what yeah. real uh, politics are all about, hangling over there. But in the meantime, we wish you a lot of great success. You have a full life ahead of you. Thank God and. 
you know, a full career ahead of you. So like Mark says, we'll check in with you in the future and see what, what's up. Thank you very much. Yes, okay, much continued you success. Much. much continued yeah. success.